Hi, this is Shauna Worth with um, Communities for Kids going um, on the training for the Ready Rosie, which was originally scheduled today, October 26, 2020 at 1 p.m. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to record the live training, but I'm going to do an overview of what we talked about today, and hopefully that will be good enough for those of you who were unable to attend. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about, which um, who we had on our agenda was Amy Einzinger from the UNL Monroe Meyer Institute. Amy shared that she's going to be working directly with six programs through the Ready Rosie C4K list to do some intensive, not so much intensive, but to do some further evaluation of the Ready Rosie program, the usage, and how it is, how it looks in those communities. So she has identified six communities. She'll be reaching out to administrators of those communities here soon, um, asking for some demographic information on a quick Qualtrics survey. She will also then continue to reach out to you to maybe schedule some times where she can do focus groups with administrators, teachers, and parents um, or caregivers of kiddos who are using Ready Rosie. So Amy is um, going to be reaching out to those six programs all across the state in order to bring in the research and um, put together an evaluation of the Ready Rosie program for us. So um, just know that if you get an email from Amy Einsinger that that's what that is about and we look forward for your participation. Um, we also talked about the notification letters that need to go out to parents. So if you have not sent them out yet, we please encourage you to do so. Those letters were sent to you through me, Shauna, um, by email. There was an English version and a Spanish version, and we just encourage you to also either email those out to parents or copy them and give them to print to parents so that they are aware that Rosie, the Ready Rosie program is being evaluated and that all confidentiality will be maintained. So the, we can have your cooperation on those ends so that we can have a good comprehensive evaluation of the Ready Rosie project that C4K is paying through through the PG, PDG funds. That would be great. Um, after Amy smoke, spoke, we then went into the Ready Rosie um, conversation that we had. And one of the things that we had talked about um, before today's meeting is we sent out a, an activity that you could give to parents to do and then um, bring back together as a family engagement opportunity, whether that was virtual or in person. And right now we're just assuming that a lot of family engagement is happening in virtual um, so that not a lot of opportunities happening and be for families to be able to meet face to face. So we sent out the fall scavenger hunt activity and hopefully you were able to encourage parents to do that or will eventually encourage parents to participate in that activity that was shared um, with us through the Lexington um, uh, preschool here in Lexington, Nebraska. So the activity was sent out and then what we did was go to Ready Rosie and if you're wanting to find videos that if you have an activity that you come up with your on your own and you want to try to send out a video that might match up with that activity so that you can encourage parents to um, do teaching moments while they're doing that what we did was just put teacher into our box and this is how we came up with some of the activities that we had talked about so we actually did the nature walk and talk videos the family sensory walk um, we talked about nature journaling and then we did sort and graph leaves. So let's talk about the sort and graph leaves, um, which if you see here, three to four years or four to five years, this one here, 18 to 36 months. Um, so if you wanted to filter by age, you could do that. Obviously nothing really a lot here for um, infants, but if you did say, um, maybe I'll just do, zero to nine months. Um, some of the grasp and go, that one might have been an opportunity that you could do if you had a little itty bitty ones with you while you were out and about doing your nature walks. So just encourage parents to be outdoors with their kids. Um, yeah, some of the ones for the little ones. But basically what we did was put it in here in the search and that's how we found what we were looking for. So let's do again, go back to nature. And then let's go to sort and graph leads. So if you go to this video, you can watch it. You can see what it's gonna, what it will say, what the teaching moment could be. 
If you come to these learning outcomes, it's sorting, graphing, data, math talk, routines, vocabulary. It talks about what can be done um, other than just leaves so that you can get leaves, rocks, flowers, sort the items, um, color, size, make a graph. So this is something that if you wanted to come up with more than, more than an activity of just doing a autumn scavenger hunt, you could um, design a graph, a blank graph. And you could also send home some colorful fall paper, maybe glue stick, um, something else that you could do, uh, marker to trace leaves, and then type up the all the different activities they could do with kids after they go on their scavenger hunt with some of the things that they found. So if they were to say um, find leaves, then you could um, encourage them to fill out the graph of the different colors and then graph how many leaves they had that were red, how many leaves they had that were yellow, how many were brown. And you could do a graph as long as you could I think ahead of time of things that you could send home with parents so that when um, they do the activity other than just the scavenger hunt, you have other ideas that parents can do with the kiddos, but you already have that material sent home so they don't have to come up with it on their own. Talks about why it's important, um, if they need a challenge, and then if you go to the explore more, it talks more what you can do. You can journal and talk and have conversations some book recommendations, and then how you can extend the learning. So all of these um, videos will all have all of this on, the, on there so that you can then think ahead of time if you want to encourage parents to participate in more than just the scavenger hunt and build an activity around um, the outside um, participation that they're doing, then there's all kinds of helpful and useful information on these videos that you can um, encourage parents and um, you know put into your lesson plan what the learning outcome is and maybe even if you do get participation you can get books and they the parents who participated then can be rewarded with the very busy spider book and give them that and then you can um, build on the book or you know, just bring the book back to the learning opportunity that you were able to share with parents so um, that is what we had encouraged the conversation to be, to be about. We had um, only a few people who had actually um, sent the videos out to parents, but we had several uh, people who have viewed the videos who actually will plan to send the videos out with the um, autumn scavenger hunt list, which I'll send out again with the next email. So if you want to review it and go back to it, you can. We just really want to encourage the use of the Ready Rosie playlist beyond the playlists that are just sent out on Monday and how you can explore and look and research all the different kinds of ways you can find playlists. So the other thing that we did was if you were to say encourage a family engagement opportunity such as the scavenger hunt, then once you brought parents back together and you wanted to do some more um, family engagement activities with them, but keep it short um, because we know that being on the computer all day or um, just being very busy in the evening, not having a lot of time, but still being able to bring parents together virtually. And we um, had asked any of you who, who were going to participate in this training then to go to this, the family workshops and the specific Gimme Tens. The reason why we asked um, you to review the Gimme Tens is because they are just 10 minutes long if and not any longer than that. And they're really not encouraged to be longer than 10 minutes that you can do a quick presentation of a learning opportunity for parents and just some parent eng engagement over um, easy things, such as um, one of the things that Teddy pointed out was the importance of creating routines. Um, because we are kind of in the beginning of a year and how important routines are, this actually has a routine chart that you could utilize or they could cut out pictures to make the routine chart. One thing each training of these has, which is very helpful, is the facilitator's guide. So I would encourage you that if you're doing this training virtually, which is very easy to do, that maybe you have the facilitator's guide up on a separate second screen so that when you're sharing screen of the slides that you can refer to this or you print it. Um, also encourage you to practice with another teacher so that you can kind of go through it and figure out how this is going to work virtually what you want to talk about and how you want it to flow before you actually do it. But again, you know, one minute for the welcome, five minutes for establishing routines, um, why it's important and continue to want. And each one of these we'll talk about slide three, slide three, you know, so you will talk about and you will know which slide you're on as you're going through your facilitator's guide. 
slide four, you'll have a little activity, last three minutes. Um, this will actually have videos on that slide and then your reflection and closing. So again, not longer than 10 minutes, but also giving the opportunity to actually do a little bit of teaching moments and some parenting um, engagement with families. So if once you did that, then you could go to the, this, PowerPoint, which you can download and save on your computer beforehand. They don't take long. So each facilitator guide matches with each PowerPoint. So if you were to and bring everybody together, say for a Zoom meeting, you shared your screen, you had your PowerPoints ready, you had your facilitator's guide near you so that you could follow along in your facilitator's guide, what you would do if you're not real tech savvy, again, like I said, you'd share your screen of, of just your PowerPoints. Come up here soon. Okay, so each PowerPoint will come up here. And again, like I said, you will follow your facilitator's guide. Um, it will have discussion about each one of these pictures. A lot of these PowerPoints are designed mostly for pictures so that you, if you have families who are not very literate, literate um, they don't necessarily have to be able to read to follow along. Um, your, again, your facilitator's guide will go with that. So strategies, these are all of the embedded videos with all the different ages. So if you're working with any age, then you'd want to, you don't have to play all of them. You could just play one, or if you played all of them, that would be great too. Again, I would encourage you to preview the videos before you did that so that you already know kind of what the videos are gonna say, how they go along, the birth of four years to K to three. These would also be great videos to find um, in your library afterwards and send them back out again after your training. Um, this is just, uh, you already have ready res registration, so you wouldn't need that. Um, and then just, that finishes up. So it's only 10 minute long videos, or 10 minute long PowerPoint with your facilitator's guide. And when you go to those, I found, so the videos are actually in the library. The Gimme Tens are on your resources page. And again, then you'll go to Family Workshops and Gimme Tens. And then you'll go down, find the Gimme Tens. So Positive Discipline Strategies, Building Math Rich Home, Health and Well-Being, Families as Leaders. So um, say with the, the Math Rich Home, we did have a provider share that when she, as a home visitor, when they did the family engagement activity, they actually sent home um, math, they did, they sent home puzzles and um, shape cutouts so that it would reinforce the learning of math at home. Um, so what we are going to do is go through all of these, give me tens, and give you some ideas of things that you could send home with parents to work on to support um, the learning. Uh, the social emotional one, we uh, were, they, somebody shared a book of faces that had all different emotions on there. So we're gonna get all those resources together. We'll share them with you so that you can implement them with the Gimme Tens so that you really find these as helpful and as useful as possible. Um, especially in this day and age when you're not gonna be able to do a lot of face-to-face -face training, but virtual training, again, like if you need to send these things home uh, beforehand and you already have people RSVP to the family engagement opportunity, that's great. Or if you had the family engagement opportunity and you wanna reward those parents who participated, then you could um, send them with the supplies or the books or anything that we suggest with any of these things to support the learning at home. So we're gonna start building that in and sending out ideas to you. And then we also encourage you that if you do find an idea to build in with any of these, or to build a name with any of the, the videos for family engagement opportunities to share them with me so then we can then share them out as a group with Nebraska so that nobody is having to kind of come up with their own activity, activity ideas because we do have a lot of um, communities now saying, you know, we need some virtual ideas and how we can do family engagement or how we could utilize the Ready Rosie platform more than just the videos that we send out. And um, the Ready Rosie platform has so much to offer 
that we're just going to start really encouraging the usefulness of it. So the next training before we actually meet again, we will send out a video list of things that we would like you to preview or possibly try and then bring back to the group and share out how it went or what you're planning on doing and then just just having some discussion of how we can implement um, the use of encouraging the learning that they have virtually at home once you've done the training. So that is it in a nutshell. The only other thing that we talked about at the end of the training was the um, incentives that we talked about last time. So those teachers who are working with any of the zero to five population um, through the PDG funding, we were able to purchase about $90 worth of materials for those who have um, implemented Ready Rosie, having their list, um, their classroom list developed and have been sending out invitations and accepting. Caregivers have been accepting them and they've been um, sending out playlists. So what we did was get our teachers list that we had um, accumulated when we were signing up classrooms. We went through the Ready Rosie website, through all the districts, we matched up teachers with those teachers on those Ready Rosie districts and schools and programs who we could see that were utilizing the program. We sent those um, names to the district managers or the um, directors of programs to confirm that they were teachers and confirm that they are implementing Ready Rosie. And between the Ready Rosie webpage, the list of teachers, then we were able to combine about a list of 280 teachers who have been utilizing the Ready Rosie platform. So those teachers then will be awarded with the materials from Lakeshore. We either be sending them directly to your program or we will be sending them to a program lead in your um, area. So say if you are from York, those would be going to Chandra and Chandra then would sort them by programs and then programs would sort them by teachers. So that is our process going forward here. Probably will be sent out hopefully sometime in November for your teachers to utilize or for you to utilize in whatever way you can. And then we are going to continue to offer incentives for usage of the Ready Rosie program. So again, we will either um, send merchandise to you or we will get you gift cards. And we're also looking at iPads for those programs that are brand new. The last thing that I do want to let you know that is if you are a district manager um, of a group of programs in your community or if you are a um, director and you have teachers who are not utilizing Ready Rosie, but they were listed as a teacher and they're signed up as a classroom. If they just need some one on one support from Teddy to be able to get their program implemented and encouragement to get going. Teddy has offered her time to do that. So please reach out to me and let me know if you would like more assistance of Ready Rosie and getting your program started. Um, we would be happy to set up whatever we needed to do for that. Um, again, you can just send me an email and we will figure out what the best way to make contact with Teddy would be for either your community or a group of teachers or a group of home providers or a group of home visitors, whatever would work best for you. So that is all for today. Thanks.